Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop, and my name is Adam, and this is going to be the final SNS of the year. <laughs> no, it's not the final SNS. This just the last one of the year. So here we are, New Year's, and we're getting ready to start 2017. And I would like to just extend my thanks to everybody out there that has been supporting me. All of my viewers, everybody that subscribes to my channel, gives me a thumbs up, leaves me comments, you know, joins in the conversation, and likes to be a part of what we do around here in this shop and what I do on my channel. Thank you guys, everybody, you know, everybody out there that's supporting me. We've got our patrons out there. Thank you guys. Uh, all of the other YouTube contributors that I've, that I've become friends with and get to collaborate with. And also, I want to thank all my sponsors out there, most especially Edge Technology. It's been great working with you guys, Sean Gordon over there at Edge Technology. And I'm, and I'm enjoying the, uh, the relationship that we're building with you guys. And I look forward to continue to work with you in the future into next year. So, if I didn't mention you guys, it's not that uh, it's not that I don't care at all. It's just I, I I have so many people that I would like to thank, and I can't think of everybody. Uh, ZT Fab, I just remembered your racks over there on the wall. Uh, Paul over there, ZT Fab, thank you for your support, and everybody that has sent in something here for me this year. You know, it's like we just we just passed uh, Christmas and. You know, it's almost like it's Christmas all year long around here, and I'm and I'm not saying that to try to boast or brag or anything like that. Uh, it's it's you guys that are wanting to do this. I don't I don't ask for anything. It's just people that watch the show, they get involved, and they like to be a part of this shop, and they decide that they like to send something. And I just can't thank you guys enough for the support that you give and the the tools that you donate for the cause around here, man. It's just awesome. It's been a really great year. We've had a big year of growth on the channel. Never expected to hit 100,000 subscribers whenever I started doing YouTube, and here we are, have surpassed 100,000. I think we're approaching 108,000 subscribers now, somewhere in that, somewhere in that range. And I really look forward to seeing how far this goes. You know, how far we continue with this. I really have no idea in my mind how long this is going to last. I really don't. We're just going to continue as long as we can while we're having fun at it and hopefully continue to bring projects you know to, to show on the channel keep doing the projects and the machine work and and associating with everybody that's watching the videos here so yeah i just really wanted to thank everybody you know just everybody that's been involved with this channel thank you very much for the support and i'm continuing to look forward to what we what we do in the future here on the channel so I hope everybody has a great New Year's and uh, maybe gets a day or two off to uh, hang out and relax around the house or uh, maybe you like to go out and, and watch, watch the ball drop. Uh, I'm going to be kind of laying low this year. I'm not going to really be out doing too much, I don't think. And hopefully I'll, I'm going to enjoy this weekend myself. So into, uh, into next year, I will say that I've I've still got a few projects over here on the table that uh, some machining projects for the channel that I need to get started on. Two of them are are, um, are viewer based projects that I had picked out that I've had for a little while. I just haven't been able to get started on it. And I've also got my smoker project that I'd still like to do that's still sitting outside. I haven't done anything with that yet because I wanted to just kind of get a game plan together and start working on it and, and get going. I'm also probably going to include my brother in on that build, uh, Kevin. I asked him if he wanted to help me with that, and he said, yeah, he'd like to help. And uh, Kevin's a good welder, and, and he, he's, he's uh, getting really good with the metal fabrication end of the, uh, the metal work and, you know, welding and fab. So he's going to jump in and help me with that project whenever we get started. I'd like to try to plan on having that completed by spring, early summer at the latest, you know, something like that. So... Uh, that's one that's going to be coming, and you never know what's going to walk in the door. We might find something that, that we really want to jump on and get started. But I look forward to bringing many more projects to you to the channel right here. So as far as this video goes, 
I'm going to show you more of that shaft that we showed in the last episode, that 12 inch gearbox shaft. And this time we're going to get to some heavy turning. And that's one of my favorite things to capture and show on the channel right here. And I think it's a pretty popular thing to watch on the, on the channel as far as my viewers goes too. So I try to, whenever I get to opportunity to make those heavy cuts like that, I take a little bit longer shot sometimes and I try to get a few different angles. And it's something that I, that I just really enjoy. I, I try to get a few different angles there and bring it to video and, and it's, I think it's fun watching it. So we're gonna have some heavy cutting this time, some more of those, some more of those half inch metal removals and fast feed rates and chip making. So get geared up and uh, get you a drink and sit back and relax and, and uh, hope, hopefully you'll enjoy. And I don't have any other thing to show this, uh, this week on this SNS, but I will say that I've got another small project that I just completed. It's a, it's a project that I collaborated with, with John Saunders, NYC CNC, and that is going to be following this episode of SNS. So we're going to be doing some work on the taper attachment on the Monarch. So be sure to check that out. All right, well, that's going to be about it, but I do want to give you an update from something that we talked about last week, and that is the carport issue. So I told you last week that I was expecting to have the carport, and I did not get any phone calls, and they did not show up, and this week there I called to try to talk to somebody, and evidently they they are closed for a couple weeks during the holiday, so they won't be back in business and operate again until next week after New Year. So I'm hoping that I get a phone call from them next week, but I, but I will be trying to get in touch with them again to try to get a, an answer on when they might be here. And I still am upset about that, but I'm at to the point where I've already been waiting nine weeks for something. They, they said six to eight weeks. It's been nine weeks. And that's what was getting me upset is the fact that I, I, there's no communication there. What I'm ranting about is customer service, okay? If, you, if it's gonna be a while to get something, I understand, but talk to your customers. Keep in touch with your customers. Don't just leave them hanging out there to dry to get upset, you know? Call them and say, hey, we're running behind. It's gonna be two more weeks before we can get you. If there's a problem, if the weather cuts us, holds us back, we'll give you another call and let you know. So that's, that's something that this company doesn't do. Apparently they don't do, but uh, I'm gonna wait it out and hopefully get my carport. And I checked around town. All the guys here in town rep the same company. So there's no point in going somewhere else. I had, a, I had a couple of guys say, why don't you just build one out there? Why don't you just do it yourself? I'm not looking to build one myself. I don't have the time for it. And I don't want a permanent structure there. I have other plans to do back here in the in the yard and on this area here and that is going to be a temporary carport it's not going to stay there forever so that's why i'm going with one of these uh, inexpensive carports so i wanted to kind of mention that i don't want to go to somebody else because there's there's no need I, I talked to one other guy and he he's got another company he uses that he highly recommends but he says they are 10 to 12 weeks out so i don't want to keep waiting around so i'm going to just try to be patient and wait for them to contact me and hopefully hopefully in a week or two i'll have my carport here and i'll let you guys know when it comes so all right that's enough for the uh the rant for this week so i hope you guys have a very happy new year and enjoy sns and we'll see you next week all right we got the shaft flipped around so we'll go ahead and get this indicated in Yeah, we got about 50. Ten, eleven, 
12. Yeah, what's up, man? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just make it all out of some cast iron. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, come on now. Just a few left. About two thou. There we go. And about a half thousandth there. We're gonna give our first heavy cut a try. This is this is a half inch on the dial or quarter inch per side. So you can see right there at the tool. It's fed in a quarter inch on that side there. And we still got it at 20 thousandths feed rate, but we may play with it and bump it up some. See what she does. Let's try bumping it up. Now this is 25. some metal there. thousandths of being to a finish a finished diameter so it's time to flip it around and get this in roughed in but as as per usual I have another rust job that, that just came to me it's another it, it's a large diameter gear with the with the shaft on it that I've got to do a little bit of repair work on it's something that uh, just got approved for hot delivery so this is the uh, Know, the, the only lay that will swing in so luckily I got to the point where this is roughed and I can go ahead and take it out next time I bring it back down and put it in it'll be flipped around so that's just another aspect of the life here in the shop you know sometimes I'm on this stuff and I have to pull off of this and work on another job and then get back on it but I don't I don't typically get to start on these kind of jobs here and work all the way through it and get it done there's a there's a lot of other stuff that I had to do. I already did five other gearbox shafts this morning, and I've only spent maybe two hours on this total, not even that. So anyway, I'm gonna fly this out of here and get on another job, and 
next time you see it, it'll be a different day. <laughs> so I just flipped the shaft around and we're gonna go ahead and get her indicated. You always like a little bit of four jaw practice, right? Quite a bit, good eighth of an inch. Let me check my center. All right, my center's tight. already loose. Snug the high a little. <clears throat> Alright, we're getting close now. Bring her back to the top there. That looks like one, maybe one and a half. thousands right there all right we're good to go so let's go ahead and check where the steady rest was running and also we'll, we'll check down here on the the outer end where I had originally indicated just to see what kind of run out we might be getting. So this was where this was where the steady rest was. Nice. Okay. I'd say that's within one thousandths. All right, let's go down there and check down there. see that? I think so. We've got us a low spot in there. Alright, one, two, three, just under about three thousandths really. Okay, that ain't too bad. So we're getting ready to turn this whole area right here. All right, we're ready to start turning. Thought I'd show you everything set up. We got our, we got a very nice writing, a bull nose center up in there, and I've already got my my cut established where we're going to stop. Put a little blue mark right there, and set a set a dial indicator, and that and this gives me uh, plenty to face off here. And, and the measurement that we use is between the bearing journals, which will be here and here that spacer I go off the old shaft and I mic it and once I set my stop there I usually give myself you know a good 16th to eighth of an inch there to go in there and clean up once we get some cuts established so we can measure it that's a that's a critical measurement on these and we got the steady rest set so I thought I'd turn it on and let you see these run a little bit and they do a pretty good job of of running nice and parallel against your your shaft, you know, they they do they still do pretty good. Here's the upper one there. Now American did a good job on them steady rest when they built them, man. They're nice and heavy duty. All right, so one other thing that I'm going to do is I have the guard that I put right here too, and I, I don't talk about it a lot. I, I mentioned it before. But we have a little gasket shop here where we can cut gaskets. So what I do is I use some of that gasket material. In this case, it's some of this Durlon 8500. And that's for a 12-inch bore uh, cylinder tube, really. 
So what I do is I make these little guards up and I slide them over and put them up against the, uh, the steady rest there. And I just use a magnet. Sometimes I'll use two magnets right there to kind of hold them. And then when this thing, when the tool is turning, it's, it tries to sling chips and it keeps them from going down in those rollers. So I'm about to do that and I'm gonna start turning. So that was 26 and a half thousand speed rate. I went one notch up on the tumbler. We're going to try 28 and a half thousand speed rate and see what it does. I'm not doing cooling right now because it's easier to see and it's not getting all over the camera. Two more notches up on the tumbler. We're now at a 31 thousandths feed rate. Now, I can tell you right now, this is probably the fastest I've ever fed a tool. So let's see how she does. like she's doing okay the tool itself likes it pretty good load on the machine I tell you that
just checking out the cut here, man. I think that's pretty cool. 31,000 feet. It's got that, it's got that nice rigid feel across it, like serrations or uh, laminations. I mean, I think the machine handled it just fine. We're gonna make one more uh, half inch cut, just like I made here. We've got about 700 thousandths to bring it down to our finished size, so I'll take another half inch cut. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my my Noga Cool this time. The uh, the shaft itself is is still cool to the touch. You know, you got something as big as it is. It's gonna take a little while to get that heat built up into it. So luckily, most of the heat went off down in the chip pan with the chips, and I can actually feel it. <laughs> I can feel it coming off. Getting it full down there. So let's go ahead and we'll get another rough cut going, and this will be our probably our final big heavy cut on this shaft. bringing her on down this is our last rough cut and I switched it out to a CNMG 432 insert that way I can get a lot better chip formation versus the, the big roughing insert so that's a 140 on the dial so it's only a 70,000 feet cut 25,000 feet rate Once we make this pass, then it's a matter of getting in here and finish it. So this is the tool. That's the tool that we were using. That one right there is made for some moving some metal. Now, if I would have tried to use this on that light cut right there, it would have just been, it would have been curling them and popping them all over the place. Like long, longer stringy curls. So I always try to get a nice chip control and pull off a nice tight chip like that there. The way it gives you these and that. 